And this this episode of uh, Tough Tiger Talk, we're going to be recapping the LSU number five ranked LSU Tigers loss to the number 22 ranked Florida Gators today. We're going to recap this game and break it down. Real interesting game. Here. This was huge, man. A huge. Uh, this, they went to the swamp and we all knew it was going to be a difficult game. Pick this team to actually win. But it was a tough game. A lot of mistakes by the team. A lot of problems. A lot of things to speak about. A lot of things. The turnovers. The horrible offensive line play. Uh, the fact that the defense didn't get any sacks, but a lot of pressures. They did not Felipe Franks around. Uh, but did not sack him in this game. The defense, the running game, did not, the defense allowing 200 plus yards of rushing in this game, all kind of stuff. So before we get, before I start hitting you with the stats and the facts on it, uh, let's get a brief take on what we thought happened in this game and why LSU fell on their face uh, against the number 22 ranked Florida Gators. They had many more sacks, many more tackles for loss than we did. We had too many turnovers just to get the job done. Any questions? Say it again. On the left side, you seem to be a lot of pressure. No question. Uh, uh, that 99 was a good player, and uh, we got beat a lot. And, uh, we tried to chip. We tried to do several things. Uh, it just didn't seem like we had an answer. Joe, Joe hadn't turned the ball over. Uh, you know, uh, obviously it was a blind side. Uh, I, I wish you'd have tucked the ball away. You know, we won't, we've got a chance to go up there 14 nothing. That was huge right there. We used turnovers, especially on the first down pass. And then, you know, the, the pick, I just wanted to throw. Even after the interception, I mean, you had a chance to be able to go down and tie with the two points. Yeah. Is that what you told them on the sideline? Yeah, we, yeah, we had a chance. We thought we would go down there and tie the, tie the game with a two-point conversion. We had practiced that the whole time. But, we, you know, we had to drop ball when uh, we had an out route. The guy was thinking about getting out of bounds. I think it was Stefan. There was just too much pressure. They were just going to get it done. What made their, their rushing attack so effective today? Yeah, they're good athletes and well coached. Was there, was I mean, it was three-man rush all the time. They ended up getting sacks. Did Franks do more damage running the ball than you might expect? Sitting in. Franks, their quarterback. You're sure. Did you know, pass rush lanes what it was at the beginning, and then they were sort of checking the speed option at the end. They made some big plays there. Yes, he made some huge plays. On, so we gave up too many explosive plays. Uh, we went up as a football team. I thought that we could stop them and win the football game. That drive, that last drive that they had was a, was a devastating drive to our team. And it seemed like the defense was out there. Not the possession was close, but it seemed like the defense was out there a long time. It sure did. It sure did. It just seemed like we couldn't make a play, couldn't get things going. They kept on converting. They made some big plays. Uh, many times when we made plays on offense, uh, we had some penalties and shot ourselves in the foot. Uh, things we got to look at. What did you see from your run game? You had the drive where you had the long runs, but other than that, it seemed like it was tough to get the run going. No, it was tough. Making the plays, that's why we kicked the field goal. First fourth to one down, I knew we could get the field goal. I didn't know for sure if we were going to get the first down. So, no, that was a discussion there. It could have went either way, but we wanted to get the points. Did it feel a lot like the Auburn game, except this time you just didn't get the last second? Very similar. Very similar. That we were fighting, but that they had the edge. It felt like they had the momentum. Uh, they had the sacks. They were making the plays. It never seemed like we could uh, give up, get over the hump, especially in the fourth quarter. Just never seemed we could make that play. Everyone realized that the Sure. No question. We knew they had some running backs, good running backs. Uh, they had a good running game. Uh, but the 250 yards, that's way too much. There's, you ain't going to win football game giving up 250 yards. And what was your message to your team after the game? Put it on me. It's always on my phone. Give them the credit when they win. It's always on me when we lose. It's not the boss. And uh, i got to get them back. That's it. There's too many mistakes in this one. You think I was dropping all the penalties and turnovers? Say it again. Too many mistakes. No, we had opportunities to make plays. You know, we got a chance to go up back 14 nothing. We don't do it. We kept on fighting, kept on fighting back. Mistake, penalties, sacks, uh, giving up uh, long runs, especially that last drive when we go ahead. You know, I thought we was going to win the football game. I thought our defense was going to stop them. We couldn't stop them. The receiver had some drops late, too. Yeah, you got to make those plays. You, gotta, you just got to make them. It's 
hostile environment, give them the credit, what a great environment those guys had. Uh, they definitely had the home field advantage tonight. You can feel it, we've got a big place. That's more about the competing in the SEC. You know, here's the deal, you know, we talked about it in our lack of always too. We're going to look at what we did wrong. We're going to do the things that we need to get fixed. We've got to tell the truth Monday and hold the Georgia with us. There's no way we're going to put this aside and just say we got Georgia next week. We're going to digest this and look at this. This is a tough loss. This is a game if we played well, we should have won the game. We didn't. Coach, right at the end of the first half, did you feel like you had to go to that level? Well, we, we had to have some play action pass on first down. Uh, we couldn't drop back to Georgia school balls, obviously. Our guys were getting beat one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we had a lot of chips, but you can only chip one or two guys. You can't chip all five. We need to get better pass protection. I've said that all year. Anything else, Coach? Great job. Great job. Great job. just seems to, to be able to find the ball whenever you guys need to turn over this season. Say again? Great job. Yeah. Seems to, to He's smart. You know, he plays the post right there. He keeps the quarterback. And, Breaks on the ball, it's a smart player. You kind of mentioned, Coach, but you could have really seized control. Like, Say it again. You kind of mentioned it, but you could have really seized control of that second drive, go 14 0. Mm -hmm. That was devastating. I thought it was. I mean, it was, it shouldn't have been, but it turned out to be. And anytime you have turnovers in the red zone like that, especially early in the game, it hurts you. Again, uh, we've had a rash of turnovers the last two weeks. We need to look at it. We need to take care of the football. The team that won the line of scrimmage, the team that was going to win the turnover battles and win the game. They won both. Sorry if you already asked if you already asked. I guess what do you say to Joe Burrow after that? Say it again? I guess what do you say to Joe Burrow after that? Well, nothing. Just make, make smart decisions. That's, that's not the time to tell him. You know what I mean? The guy broke on the ball. He, he had an out route. He's trying to force the throw right there. He was under the rest of the whole game. But the way that, yeah, the way that Florida was running the ball, how much did you feel like that set up play action? For no question. It always up. That's it. We knew that. When you're not coming in the game, he's a run play action pass guy all the time. Did his arm strength surprise you at all? Say it again. Did his arm strength surprise you at all? In no, the I, I, I kind of knew what they were going to do you know, as far as run play action. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Third down conversion, three and four, you were three and five. Yeah. Couldn't protect. <laughs> we tried every protection we could. We could, and what we did, we dropped some balls. So it wasn't good. It wasn't a good night for the Tigers, and uh, I'm taking full responsibility. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Ed. LSU finished the game 371 total yards versus Florida 391 yards. They had three turnovers in this game, and Florida had one. First downs, the Tigers had 20, 19 for Florida. Time of possession, LSU, 30 minutes and 24 seconds versus Florida's 29 minutes and 36 seconds. Very close on the T.O.P. First down, Tigers 20 to Florida's 19. Third down efficiency, four out of 17 have to do a better job of converting on third downs. Florida was four of 13. You look at the passing yards. We talked about um, Joe Burrow's uh, play in this game. He was 19 of 34 for 191 yards, had two really, really crucial turnovers, uh, actually three, the two interceptions plus the fumble when he got hit from behind. And a lot of this was the, the play of the offensive line. They were pathetic in this game. Uh, looking at the Russian statistics as well, LSU's running game was in effect 180 yards total for all the running backs, 215 uh, Florida had on LSU, 43 rushing attempts. LSU had 41 against Florida. Then they had five yards of rush, LSU 4.4 against Florida, 11 penalties for the Gators for 116 yards, despite all those penalties uh, that, that the Gators had against them. They still were able to come and pull this game out. LSU had eight penalties for 75 yards. And as we mentioned, three turnovers versus Florida's one, which was a fumble loss and two interceptions by LSU. Looking at it, this was the funny thing about the game. Now, getting into some of the, the offensive statistics dealing with, with Joe Burrow. Like we said, three turnovers in the game. Of course, two of those interceptions came late. One was on the last play of the game when he was trying to play. I must say, this was a really a tough one for the Tigers to swallow, being that the defense, which was the, the key thing that really would have kind of helped elevate and keep the Tigers close, and they did to a degree. They did, uh, the secondary did hold Felipe Franks to 161 yards. He had an interception by Dale Pitt, and the, but the running game was totally something else. Perrine, Laminko Perrine, was, was, he didn't have a great yardage game, 17 carries for 85 yards, not bad, but averaged five yards every time he touched the ball. Two touchdowns. Jordan Scarlett, 
14 carries, 65 yards. He was averaging almost five yards a carry in this game as well, and they could not stop him. So looking at, we're going to break down the defense in a minute. Let me finish the stats on the offense for the Tigers. Of course, we mentioned Joe Burrow, what he did. Uh, the LSU running game, 15 carries, 95 yards for Nick Brusetti at two rushing touchdowns in this one. Big ups to him. Clyde Edwards, fresh pencil hell there, 13 carries, 55 yards. And then, of course, Joe Burrow had 10 scrambles. I mean, he had 10 scrambles for 22 yards as he tried to affect change in this one as well. LSU's receiving core, Justin Jefferson, three catches, 50 yard, had a crucial drop toward the sideline. It was a difficult catch, but if you're going to be the best, and they're saying that J- Justin Jefferson is the best wide receiver for this team this year, he he, he was supposed to make that. If, that. if that was Odell Beckham Jr. or Jarvis Landry, they would have made that catch. No hands down. Of course, Derek Dillon, four catches for 42 yards. Nick Brissett had two for 28. So Steven Sullivan had a had two for twenty four and a major drop in a, in later portions of the game a crucial drop didn't make no sense hit him right in the hands he dropped it you cannot do that type of crap of course the and before we get into the defense LSU offensive line which has been a pretty good sticking point for the team. They did pretty decent work, but this game, they were just totally decimated by the Florida Gators uh, attack. The, the defensive line just dominated the line of scrimmage. Even though LSU was able to run 41 times for 180 yards and get a couple of scores, but protecting the quarterback, he was under duress for most of this game. And it wasn't even, sometimes it was four four defensive line pass rushes. Most of the, and then toward the end of the game, they were getting pressure on him with three linemen and they had five guys and sometimes six guys back there blocking. Like we said, we ran out some of the statistics. Felipe Franks wasn't awesome, but he did just enough. He threw he threw a touchdown, 12 to 27, 161, one touchdown, had an interception. He threw under duress. But the real the, the thing that really helped him, Felipe did scramble six times for 42 yards and kept them all balanced. A couple of times he picked up first downs, which ultimately helped keep the game alive for Florida to keep this, the LSU defense on the field as they begin to tire out. You know, anytime you give up that much of that amount of rushing, let's switch over to the defense now. Here's some of the defensive stats for the line. Mika Bakersfield was the top man. He had 11 tackles in this game. A John Battle had 10 in this game. 10 for Dale Pitt, 9 for Delvin White. Glenn Logan finished with 7. Michael Divinity Jr. had 6. Kerry Vincent Jr. at four. Ray Thornton had four. Todd Harris, three. Rashad Lawrence, Ed Alexander had three. Two for Neil Farrell Jr. Brendan Fajoko had two. And then a, a tackle apiece by Blake Ferguson, Christian Fulton, Patrick Queen, and Travis Moore. So that's the statistics. Obviously, you're looking at Mika Bakersfield and John Battle. Those men was there for uh, LSU. We know how prideful a defensive coordinator like like Dave Miranda is obviously is a uh, very powerful. He's the highest paid defensive coordinator. He's making what some head coaches are make. They, they invested a lot in the defensive side of the ball for them to allow the Florida Gators to rush for over 200 yards and two scores on 43 attempts has to be stuck in his crawl. He has to be some pissed off right now. And I hate to be a defensive player in that locker room uh, right now as, you know, Dave Aranda just laying into him. This is this has got to hurt. They didn't get one sack. They got a lot of pressure, but the pressure is not a sack. They didn't put Felipe Lopez down where it counts. They didn't sack him. But Dave Aranda, he had one turnover. They got that one turnover, which was the pick. And then, of course, you know, the defense, you know, just couldn't get out of their own way at times. They gashed them. They looked tired. They looked despondent. And then and then ultimately the offense just couldn't carry the day. I'm going to give credit where credit is due. The the only aspect of the team, maybe I could say the running game was was OK with 41 carries for 180 yards and two touchdowns. They kept the, the Tigers in it. Of course, um, the special teams was awesome as well. Once again, Cole Tracy, two of two. One of the longest ones was a 42 yards. He was responsible for seven points of today's game. And a big shout out to Zach Von Rosenberg and Josh Groton. Those guys punting back there. They were pinning the Florida Gators deep in their own territory. I mean, they were absolutely spectacular. They had four punts that landed the Florida Gators with inside of their own 20 yards. Von Rosenberg had one that was 61 yards long. He finished the day with five punts for 229 yards, averaged almost 46 yards a punt. He put two of them inside the 20, and like I said, one of them was a 61-yarder, and Josh Groden had three punts for 115 yards, averaged about 38 yards a punt. He put two of them inside the 20, and his longest one was a 41 yard. So all together, both punters, eight punts, 344 yards, 43-yard average, and four of them was inside 20. Now, it sounds kind of weird that I'm shouting out the punters, but the punters in the kicking game, the kickers and the punters pinned 
the Florida Gators back in their own territory. The defense couldn't do enough to, they, to take advantage of that bad field position that Florida had. They allowed them to run the ball and throw the ball and move up and down the field and stay on the field longer than what they were supposed to stay on there. But I think this is a good butt whipping because now that you get your first loss, now it kind of drops you back down to reality in the way you lost. Now it focus you and say, you know what? Let's get back to the drawing board. We got to bring it next week against a quality opponent in Georgia. Now that'll do it for the recap on the LSU and Florida game. Now, when we come back from the other side of the break, we're going to discuss and break down the upcoming matchup between the Georgia Bulldogs and LSU Tigers. That's on the other side of this episode of the Tough Tiger Talk. So stick around with us. Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is the Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out the Sports Coma with Big Q in the guy. Do you need a domain name? How about a host for your website that can work with WordPress? Try Namecheap.com. They make registering, hosting, and managing domain names for yourself or others easy and affordable because of the internet needs people. Namecheap is an ICANN accredited domain register and technology company founded in 2000. It's one of the fastest growing American companies according to the 2018 Inc. 5000. Celebrating nearly two decades of providing unparalleled levels of service, security, and support. Namecheap has been steadfast and Customer satisfaction with over 10 million domains under management. Namecheap is among the top domain registers and web providers in the world. They offer a full selection of popular and unique domains along with fully featured hosting packages, SSL security certificates, who is guard privacy protections, and more, all at the lowest prices in the industry. So if you need a domain name or hosting or anything else, think namecheap.com. That's right, namecheap.com. Check the description section below for link. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Review, the new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Balance. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash pelicans dash i dash view. What's up sports world? It's Big Q. Talking at you from the PRO Media Network. Letting you know that we're attempting to make things a lot simpler on our listeners and viewers of our mini podcast. So as a result, we're leasing down a lot of our shows to have their own channels for your convenience. Starting soon, shows like Ring King Box, LSU's Tough Tiger Talk, the Pelican Post Game Report will all have their own individual YouTube channels so thank you for working with us during this process thank you for subscribing thank you for sharing thank you for commenting thank you for everything thank you for your donations and support for our platform as we continue to improve moving forward